Good morning, buddy. How are you? You got quite a day planned for yourself, don't you? I have to go work all day. I have to work a 12-hour shift today. And you're going to Pollyanna's house to play. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Pollyanna's on watch duty. <laughs> Alright, I'm heading over to get my daily hike in before I have to go to work. So, since I have to work pretty early today, it's going to be a relatively short vlog. But, I told you guys the other day, when I had to work, not yesterday, but the day before, I actually filmed what's going to be your vlog today, and it's awesome. I promise you that. If you love Laurel and Hardy, it'll be worth your time. Well, today is also the anniversary of Richie Valen's birthday, and uh, his former junior high school is having a, like a sock hop, which would have been probably worth checking out, but I probably wouldn't have went anyway, And uh, but it's happening when I'm working, so... Pretty much nixed it out completely, but I might do something Richie related tomorrow because I've already been to his grave. I've been to the house he bought his, his mom. So, <clears throat> I have one thing I've wanted to see for a little while. I think I might just do it tomorrow. I'm gonna take an easy day tomorrow, but I'll probably do that tomorrow. I really don't know what to say about this. Somebody left their slippers out here? On an electrical box? All right. Art. Only in Los Angeles will you go hiking and every woman that you walk past, you'll be able to smell her perfume. <laughs> Only LA women put perfume on to go hiking, that's for sure. That's it. The hard stuff's done. All right, back to where I parked. I decided it's almost easier just to park up here in Bob Barker's neighborhood than try and find parking by Runyon. You know, I might as well just get one of those postal scales for my house as much as I'm here. I had to mail back that denim shirt that I ordered because it was a little bit too big and if it's a little bit too big now it's gonna be a lot too big in like a week or two well today we're out here checking out one of my favorite well they were starting in the silent movies but this movie was definitely not a silent movie Laurel and Hardy's a perfect day and uh, this house right here mostly what you see is you see the guys parked right here in the middle of the street But you also see that doorway. And quite a bit of the movie. Now the house is a little bit different color. Back in those days the house was actually two-tone brown or brown and tan.
But this is one of the funniest of all the Laurel and Hardy movies. I mean, this is when they were in their heyday. And this is also one of those movies that they have, since it was made colorized, you can see it in both black and white and color. But what you see in this movie is actually, you see their car parked right here in the middle of the street, and they're going off to have a perfect day, them and some of their friends, and they've got a whole back seat full of people, and they're doing their goodbyes, and you see them waving what would be this house, and uh, that is not the original, that white picket fence, that is not what was in the movie, it was a different type of fence that you see going along the side where the driveway was, but... You see them waving to their friends over here, and to their friends over here, and what would have been here in the movie. And that's where they do that like two minute long goodbye scene, like the goodbye, goodbye, and they just keep saying it back and forth, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye! Back and forth, everybody on every side of the street they're waving goodbye to. And, uh, <laughs> and then the moment that they start rolling, I mean, they get like literally three or four inches where the wheel has moved and they run over a tack right here in the middle of the street. So they end up having to get everybody out of the car and they have to change this flat tire. And you guessed it, once again, once they get finally done with changing the flat tire and they get in the car, they load up everybody in the car and they start to pull away, you get another two minute goodbye scene. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. But you actually do see them go inside the door. You see all their friends go inside and this house is heavily featured. And you can find this movie on YouTube. It's a classic. If you've never seen it, definitely go watch it. It's really funny. There's a really great scene where Stan is trying to put his jacket on and he ends up putting Ollie's part of the jacket on and they, they both get intertwined in the same jackets. It's just great. It's such a great classic movie and if you don't know much about the Laurel and Hardy history, this was a good place to start because this was the Hal Roach era. I mean, this was, they filmed a lot of stuff over here in uh, like the Culver City, Century City, mostly Culver City area because Hal Roach Studios was over here. And it's just nice to see that a house that was featured in a 1929 classic picture would still be around. And, you know, like I said, the gate and the fence and everything is different from what you see in the movie. And for a good chunk of the movie, and especially what I'm going to show you, you end up seeing it's kind of cropped. You see mostly that. You see mostly the windows and you see mostly the, uh, the doors but I thought it'd be nice to show you what it looked like in black and white then, and color then, and then black and white now, and color now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had to be over here to work anyway, and I thought, you know, I've been wanting to do this house for quite a while, and it is one of my favorite Laurel and Hardys ever, so I said, hey, today's the day. We're gonna come by and see where they filmed a perfect day. Well, Lionheart, I think I might do a uh, I might do a live chat tonight because I have some funny stories to tell you about this gig today. Some things that I heard, and I don't know. I'm gonna be getting off work so late that I know it'll pretty much be a lot of trolls. But you know what, guys? What they don't know is I've blocked a lot of them. They can still post, but I don't ever get to read any of them. I only find out that they post anything if somebody complains to me about something they wrote. 
but I never see it. The beauty of YouTube, baby. Good night. <laughs>